Hey guys, welcome to a new Photoshop tutorial with PSD Box. I'm Andre, and today I'm gonna talk about uh, advanced selections and how to use calculations in Photoshop. Um, I have this tutorial already on the website. It's called Calculations Advanced Masking. And as you can see here on the screen, I had the text version uh, published, I don't know, when, in 2010. Um, and today, um, Roland Rick um, mentioned that uh, he couldn't find that tutorial on my YouTube channel. And when I made this tutorial about how to add tattoos um, on the skin uh, on a realistic manner, I think I mentioned about calculations. And actually I talked about calculations in other videos and I think I made a quick uh, demo on some of my tutorials. Uh, but today I'm going to talk specifically about how to use calculations and how to create advanced selections and I'm going to show you an example of how you can use this uh, great feature of Photoshop. So I hope you will like it and let's get started. So in order to use calculations uh, I'm going to use this free image and well actually it's not a free image uh, i got it from deposit photos uh, but um, here on the website i use a really simple image with a blue background and for an image like, like this calculations it's not even necessary because uh, with the color range or with the, even with the magic wand tool you can you can create a selection uh, for this it's really it's really simple so i'm going to use uh, something a bit more complex not really difficult but um as you can see here, we have these branches over here and, um, well, we have these mountains. These are really easy to select, but here we have some problems with the trees and um, making a selection with the quick selection tool or with the magic one tool could take some time. Um, using the calculation doesn't mean that it has to be uh, something that is really quick to do, but uh, it can handle something a bit more advanced and some uh, and more complex selections uh, than you can do with uh, the magic one, for example, or with the color range. So it doesn't necessarily mean that it has to that it creates really quick selections, but it can handle uh, complex selections. So um, in order to uh, work with this, first you have to go to the channels. Uh, I forgot to change the language of Photoshop. So hang on a second, I'm going to restart Photoshop and um, because you will see uh, better if it's uh, in English. Okay, back to Photoshop, as I said, you have to go to channels. So here what you have to do is take a look at each of your channels and identify the areas that you want to mask. Uh, for this example, I want to mask the sky. So let's imagine I want to change the sky with something else. So what I would do is uh, take a look at each channel, the red, green and the blue. Of course, we're working on the RGB uh, color space and you have to um, choose the channel that gives you most contrast between the element that you want to mask and that the elements that you want to keep. So in this case, blue uh, is the channel that gives me most contrast be uh, between the sky and this church here and uh, the foreground over here. Uh, in many cases, maybe more than 50% of the times, the blue channel will be the one that will give you most contrast, but it uh, depends, of course, uh, on your image that you're using. So I will use the blue channel. So the next thing that I'm going to do is go to image adjustments and choose, um, sorry, uh, image uh, calculations over here. Now, here uh, you can see this new window appears, this um, menu over here, and we have source one and source two, and then we have the blend mode. So basically what calculations does uh, is it takes two channels and uses a blend mode to, um, to blend them and uh, give you more contrast. Um, we also have the two, two invert um, modes here. So for example, I can take the blue channel on source one. You can even uh, mask from, uh, you can even select layers from different documents. So if you have different documents open, you can do that. And of course, different layers. I only have one image, so uh, that's the only source that I have. So I can take the blue channel and mix it with the green channel, for example. and using the multiply blend mode, you can see the result. If I change this to, for example, overlay, you can see what I get. Obviously, I'm just interested in the contrast uh, between the edges here. If I get bright tones here, I don't care about that. So 
Uh, one thing that would work here, as I said, I found that the blue um, channel will give me most, uh, most contrast. I will use source one to be blue. I can use blue on source uh, two as well. But instead of using this blend mode, uh, here we get two other blend modes, which are add and subtract. If I use subtract, you can see I get this blue image because I'm subtracting blue from blue. So the result is nothing. Now, if I change this to invert any of them, for example, uh, this one, the top one, you can see how immediately I increased contrast and now I isolated the sky a lot more. And we also have isolated the details over here. Now we can complement this with another technique, which I'll show you later. Uh, after I'm done with this, I'm gonna add a new sky and I, I can I will show you how to blend the colors on the edges as well. So the good thing about the add and subtract uh, blend modes is that we also have the offset and the scale. Now with this, you can do some really advanced stuff. I don't know the math behind this, but I know pretty much um, what I have to do to get uh, certain results. Basically, if you're increasing the offset, uh, this goes from zero to 255. So let's put it to the max so you can see what it does. It kind of uh, multiplies everything. And the lower you have it, let's leave it on 64, the higher the contrast. The same with the scale. So if you put a scale of two, uh, this one goes from, um, zero, from one to two. So um, you kind of, darkens the highlights, let's let's call it that way. So if you put a scale of one and an offset of, let's say 20, you can see um, what you get. So I think 64 works and scale one, and this is what I got. I'm gonna click okay. And now I can repeat the process, go again to image calculations. And this time uh, you can see when you click okay, you create a new alpha channel. And alpha channels is just a saved selection. Uh, basically, so I can get alpha one and mix it. I don't know uh, with the red so you can experiment uh, with this I'm gonna invert one of the channels you can invert uh, the top or the bottom one It depends on really what you want to have selected, but uh, you can see that on alpha one. I had this um, white um, Actually, I had the sky white uh, and I want to keep it that way. So I would probably uh, just multiply alpha channel uh, with itself. Now apply image calculations. So I will get alpha one and just multiply it by itself or even choose, let's try soft light um, to see if we can increase the contrast even more. Yep. And there you have it. Now we have some problem over here, but I'm gonna show you how to, how to deal with that. Um, of course, you can also apply levels and curves to, to alpha channels. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. So with alpha two selected, I'm gonna press Control command L to open uh, my levels. And I'm gonna increase the highlights a bit and darken the midtones. And one cool trick here is using the brush tool actually. I'm sure you've seen this before. So I'm gonna put the opacity and the flow to 100%. I'm gonna use a soft brush. And I'm gonna change the blend mode of the brush itself to, uh, let's say, overlay. And what you do with this is if you paint with white over a black area with, with the overlay blend mode, nothing will happen. But if you paint on something that is um, mid-tone gray, like for example here, oops, with white, not with black, take a look. I just brighten the brighter areas and not the dark ones. Check that out and here as well. Make sure you don't paint over this area, but if you can see here, we have this dark line, which helps us separate things. So you can safely paint with this. Um, you will lose some, some of the edge, but um, it's a lot better than using the magic wand. So let's paint over there as well. Remember that um, it doesn't always have to be pure white because transparency sometimes um, look better, uh, semi-transparent areas. It also depends, of course, on the new background that you're gonna use the image on. So I'm gonna paint with this over here really quick. Um, and here with black, actually, I'm gonna change the blend mode back to normal. Don't forget to change the blend mode back to normal on your brush because 
sometimes it can give you uh, headaches because if you go back to the layers the blend mode will stay the same it will be kept in in soft light or whatever mode you had it and let's say you want to paint on a layer mask and it doesn't work and you don't know why it happened to me a lot of times okay let's oops let's fill this area over here i'm going to fast forward uh, painting these areas over here and i'm going to show you how i can change uh, how i will change the sky and blend the colors uh, on the edges Okay, I'm not going to select the top part because um, if you check the RGB, I can, this part is really easily selected, uh, selectable with uh, the quick selection tool. Now, if you want to check if this is pure white, what you can do is uh, grab the eyedropper tool and go to info. You can uh, see this tab if you go to window and choose info and just move the mouse over here and on C uh, M Y K. if you see that, if you see no change there, it means uh, it's pure white. Uh, check that on here when it, where it's black, the K is set to 100%. Okay, so I'm um, going back to the RGB. I'm gonna leave alpha to there, and well, actually, I'm gonna create the selection. I'm gonna unlock the layer with Alt double click, and now I'm gonna control click the alpha two and go here and create the layer mask. It's inverted, so I have to control I on it. And you can see I selected the sky and everything there. I still have some remainings over there because I went really quick and over here. Um, but I will change the sky now. I'm going to open a new image. So I'm going to paint my new sky over here. It's this one. This is the sky that I want to use. Something a bit more sunsetish looking. I'm going to place it right over there and I'm going to fix this part here on top. I'm going to deactivate the layer mask with shift click and I will select with the quick selection tool. I'm going to select this part over here. Maybe with the magic wand it's a bit quicker. Tolerance 13 and a bit higher. Okay, like that. And this area here as well. And I'm going to reactivate the layer mask and I'll have to invert the selection and with the brush paint on the layer mask with white to reveal this. Uh, obviously I'm doing this really quick because what I wanted to show you really is how to work with the calculations and even there I went really quick. And I could, I could have done a, a selection a lot better than this, but um, that way you can practice yourself and learn how this tool works. Now, as I said, if you have some remainings on the edges, which is not, which is perfectly uh, normal and it's, uh, it will happen, what you can do is um, go back to the layer mask, right click on, on it and choose select and mask or refine edge or refine mask, it depends on your Photoshop version. And here, uh, what I can do, if I mm, remove too many, too much detail, I can shift the edge positively to recover some of the deleted parts and increase maybe the feather a bit. And then choose decontaminate colors. And what Photoshop will do is if you increase the feather too much, it will try to match the color of the surrounding areas. I think it uses the um, um, content aware feature, but I'm, I'm not sure. So I will, instead of using a positive edge, I'm going to leave it to zero maybe here on the shift edge and probably increase the contrast just a bit or try not changing any of the settings here and see what you get. Uh, it really depends on your image. And, but uh, usually it works uh, pretty well. Um, what it does is it takes the colors around the edges and it blends that with the background. You can also use the smart radius uh, to just paint. I never use this, so um, I, I rarely use this. Uh, I could probably have to choose the minus here and just paint like that and hope that Photoshop will do a, a good work. I made this really quick. You can get a better edge around here, but anyways, so I'm gonna click okay now 
and that's how I changed. Oops, that's how I changed the uh, background eye and use the calculations on this. So calculations is a really powerful tool. I went really quick here, but um, I just wanted to show you that. Uh, on my website, you'll find a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to use it. And well, I hope you enjoyed it. And if you like it, just comment on the video or on my website. And I'll be glad to answer any questions if I, if I can help. So see you next time.